Hey guys, this is Leslie. I'm one of the admissions counselors for Penn State Wilkes-Barre and welcome to Penn State Wilkes-Barre's virtual academic week. Um, today you have myself, uh, Brian Close, with another admissions counselor and also Dr. Christine Bergenay, um, one of the professors at Penn State Wilkes-Barre who's going to go over some academic programs within the College of Liberal Arts. Um, very quickly, I just want to remind you of some enrollment next steps um, at this point. You guys have been accepted, so congratulations and welcome to the Penn State family. Um, next step for you guys is to do what you're doing now is attend one of our virtual academic breakout sessions. Uh, we have sessions today, tomorrow, April 14th, and then also Wednesday, April 15th. Um, you can register online at our website, which is there up on the screen, um, and you'll have opportunities to interact with our Penn State faculty to learn about the academic program of your choice. Um, secondly, you want to respond to your offer for admission, um, either one, by logging into your My Penn State account to request an offer extension. Um, typically, the enrollment um, deadline is uh, May 1 for the universal acceptance date, um, but we are extending that to June 1st if needed um, because of the coronavirus. The other option is, is to obviously accept your offer to Penn State by paying your non-refundable deposit. Um, and then thirdly, you could secure um, off-campus housing if needed through our Nittany Commons and you see the contact information there up on the screen as well. Um, finally, if you have any questions today, feel free to type them into the chat um, and we'll be able to answer those as we go along with the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions after today, feel free to contact the admissions office at 570-675-9238 or our email address is up there on the screen, wbadmissions at psu.edu. At this point, um, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Christine Bergenay, who is going to cover some of the programs in the College of Liberal Arts. Christine? All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to uh, first, uh, I'm in the English department, and I'm the coordinator for the Letters, Arts, and Sciences program and the interim coordinator of the Corporate Communication program. And so that's why I've been asked to present to you today. And I'm going to share my screen, and it's about a, a 15, it's about a 15 minute presentation. So if you're wanting to plan things, and let's see. Okay. Sorry about this, it's not letting me screen to all of my my PowerPoint won't come up. Oh, here we go. Sorry. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Yep, we can see it there, Christine. Great, thank you. So, um, I titled this presentation, Go Anywhere with the Liberal Arts. And, and so I wanna show you how you can go anywhere with the liberal arts. In this presentation, I will define the liberal arts and liberal arts majors, dispel myths, and also talk about careers that are suitable for liberal arts majors and have you be workforce ready. And that I wanna talk about some things um, with regard to liberal arts at Penn State Wilkes-Barre, whether it's a two plus two, which can mean either that you start two years with us and move on to another Penn State University campus to finish your four years, or if you came from as a transfer student from a community college for a couple of years and then finished your degree at Penn State Wilkes-Barre or spent all four years here. And I'd like to answer your questions. So to get started, I want to dispel some myths about liberal arts education. 
One is that the agenda for a liberal arts education is to produce liberal political party members. And that's just, that's completely false. And part of it is that what we teach is people to question, to challenge what they hear, what they learn. And so if that leads them to a, lib a liberal political party, um, fine, but it's definitely not a necessity. With a liberal arts degree, you have no direct career training. Now, this is definitely false, but it, 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 with the caveat that liberal arts tends to be skills focused more than like if you get a medical degree, you go into medicine, that direct and, and, and sort of limited connection. And the third one is with a liberal arts degree, you will make a meager salary. And so I'm going to be dispelling these myths with this presentation and starting with uh, a, a survey that the o Association of American Colleges and Universities conducted um, with employers that 93% of employers believed that a demonstrated capacity to think critically, communicate clearly, and solve complex problems is more important than a candidate's undergraduate major, a specific major. So those are the skills associated with liberal arts education. So more particularly, liberal arts means learning for a free person. So somebody who's living in a free society and just society to prepare them for the kinds of challenges, critical thinking and democratic decision-making that that a person in a, a de de democratic society should possess. So we want to teach students to learn how to learn. So we learn by, we listen, we absorb information into a big picture. We use credible sources that may conflict with currently held beliefs, but then may lead to personal change. We question why it's true or how it became truth in a discipline historically. We also develop your knowledge base. So research for what you still need to know. So someone, it, it, we, we have a driving research question, like is it, is it more uh, eco-friendly to recycle glass or recycle plastic? And so a person with that research question would go out and search for sources and consider the credibility of the sources, recognize their own blind spots and biases, and consider how something could be done differently, better, more ethically, and not just how it's been done forever. Next, we want to encourage people to think for themselves. So there's no line of thinking that you have to espouse. It's think for yourself, recognize facts from hype, identify con contradictions and inconsistencies in the information you're presented with, and look things up to verify information presented and believed, rather than just going on an assumption that you are coming from an informed position so that you can, in the fourth case, communicate effectively. And when we communicate effectively, it's because we've asked good questions. With corporate communication, uh, it's a Bachelor of Arts program, and it deals with interdisciplinary uh, organization-based communicative arts. So that's the key, organization-based. And so what we do is we look at, we, we have students take corporate comm and business classes web-based competency courses, such as web writing and digital design. Courses that emphasize human and design aspects of today's organizations. And skills developed and applied include analytical, verbal, and creative. With the English major, it's a Bachelor of Arts. The words you use matter. So language, what its meanings are, how it expresses what a person experiences, 
And language is a key in professional relationships and communication. The English major encourages students to engage in critical reading. And it's critical reading of literature, yes, and film and video and advertising. The world around us, it could be a label on a product. Purposefully gather, analyze, and synthesize information. So you have a question, you want to know, I want to know more about, and then you're pursuing it systematically. And writing creatively and professionally to develop highly marketable career communication skills. With letters, arts, and sciences, this is a two-year degree. It's a multi multidisciplinary major that is based on a student picking a subject or theme that interests him or her and working with an advisor to create a course, uh, a curriculum that is surrounding that particular area of interest. So here's some for examples, modernism. So modernism, you may look at it from terms of art, the arts, literature, history, political science, philosophy, economics, and so forth. And you can tailor it so that your projects may focus on a particular type of or phenomenon or cause or movement within modernism. If your interest was steampunk, then you would want to take courses that were of the Victorian art, history, literature, uh, mechanics, of course, all the steam engines and such, clocks, and culture. And while that's pretty specific, what you would do is take courses that cover that the historical phenomenon and do research projects that may develop your understanding uh, with, with the steampunk movement. Or if 9-11 was your, your subject of interest. Okay, so if you wanted to do uh, to develop your your expertise in 9-11 you know, learning more about global religions and history and languages and literatures and cultures would help in, um, and then giving you the background to be able to communicate it clearly. Now I'm, I'm taking you from just Penn State Wilkes-Barre to liberal arts at the whole Penn State University. And just to show you a little bit about uh, how, how diverse and how many majors you could uh, finish with. Maybe not at Penn State, Wilkes-Barre, but at Penn State University at one of the other campuses. So we've got African American studies, African anthropology, Asian, comparative literature, the classics, of course, English, economics, criminology. And so you for example, administration of justice on our campus is technically within liberal arts, but we have a full major on administration of justice that other folks in that, in that program can, can talk about with more expertise than I could. History, Jewish studies, languages, philosophy, and ending with women's uh, gender and sexuality studies. So this is something you can look up yourself and explore further. Now this, uh, this slide is about how a student can take liberal arts skills and pair them with some technical knowledge and skills. So um, they can do that with a minor, a concentration, a certificate, or even uh, a few courses. So, okay, you can get a liberal arts degree, but then you've taken courses in, let's say, uh, medicine, or more than likely biology, undergraduate biology, chemistry, uh, astron uh, astronomy, and um, meteorology, so that pairing those, the skills together enables you to write and communicate and research more int intelligently in the various fields, so you can go anywhere with the, your liberal arts uh, skills. And so what we have here is average entry level salary. So this is to someone who just has 
uh, who has liberal arts, has a liberal arts degree. And then this, this uh, second line here um, is with liberal arts degree plus some additional technical skills or background. So the salary does increase and it would depend on what kind of uh, technical skills you had that would make you particularly useful. So uh, down here below, it says, and these are all the job postings. That's a lot of jobs. It's not like you can't get a job with a liberal arts degree. That's another myth. And the lazy debate. I, I actually wasn't aware of this, but that's another myth that if you go to liberal arts, you must be lazy or lack direction, career focus. The remaining 52% will require specific degrees or certifications. Okay, go anywhere with liberal arts. Uh, this one, I'm just gonna do a little bit of zooming in. This slide is from, it's a screenshot from the government's Bureau of Labor Statistics. And it's called the Occupational Outlook Handbook. And every year, this organization does research on, ver on the job markets, the economy, and then puts updates this information. And it is full of information. This is just a little bit here. But salaries and descriptions of what you would do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so here, I picked media and communication. And so there are these, there are these types of job categories. And then if you click on them, you would have even a fuller and more specific list of jobs. And so here you have some, what the uh, degree, the certification you need uh, as a prerequisite, and then some uh, salaries. So not meager. And again, depending on how you pair it with technical skills, it could go up from, from there. So why Penn State Wilkes-Barre? You know, small campus, big degree. We're a small campus that has all the benefits of being small, but part of a, a statewide system that is recognized through the world. So you get a good value for your high quality education. You have dedicated faculty from competitive and respected graduate programs that teach and work with you. You're not in a big lecture hall. You get, it's interactive, small classes. So faculty and staff get to know you. And we have extensive student services that support your academic goals, your personal growth, and the time of your life. And then here again, the four years. So you go to two years, you could go four years with one of our majors, two years with the letters arts and sciences or some, or one of the other uh, two year degrees. Two years here, two years at Penn State University Park or Harrisburg or whichever campus has the major that you, that interests you. It's your degree and it's from a world renowned research institution. I'm not kidding. I've been to places in Europe, South America, Canada, and I've, I, as soon as I mention Penn State University, they know, they recognize it. And it would be your membership in the largest alumni association for career networking and importantly, lifelong friendship building. So now, uh, I'm asking you, what information would help you make this important decision? So what do you need to know It's an, to make an informed decision? And here is my contact information. You're welcome to uh, contact me through the summer. Uh, sometimes I check weekends too. Um, so it's C-A-B, like CAB39, C-A-B39 at Penn State psu.edu. And finishing my slide presentation with 
go anywhere with the liberal arts. Okay, that is my presentation. Hey, thanks so much, Christine. It doesn't look like we have any questions in the chat, um, but thanks for sharing your email and your contact information. And I'm sure if any students um, have questions, they'll be reaching out to you. All right, hope you enjoy the process. All right, guys, thanks for attending our virtual uh, academic program session um, on the College of Liberal Arts. Um, again, next steps, don't forget to pay your um, acceptance fee on your My Penn State account. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to Penn State Books Fair Admissions Office to either Brian or myself, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Stay safe. Thanks.